Welcome back to Educator.com. This is going to be a quick lesson um, on the basics of floats. So uh, there are only two properties that really deal with floats, even though they're very complicated. Um, one is float, which sets the element that you're applying it to as a floated element or as a not floated element if you use the uh, value of none. And then clear deals with how uh, floated elements interact with other floated elements and with uh, pages in the normal flow of the document. Um, so floating is uh, at its most basic. It's a way of left or right aligning something. Um, you can't center align with it. Um, and so clearly the right and the left uh, float property values will uh, take that element and move it all the way to the right or the left. And then um, a common example will be if you have an image that you want in a paragraph to be aligned in the left and you want the paragraph text to flow around it. Um, this is probably the simplest use of floats. Um, but then you get into a lot more complicated things, especially when you're dealing with, um, with float floated elements that expand beyond uh, the container elements or uh, when you're dealing with layouts that are using floats. Um, so let's get take a quick look at some of the basic rules of floats. Um, so this is a long list of uh, basic float behavior. Um, and we'll, we'll go through it and uh, give demonstrations of each point as we go along. So first of all, um, a floated element starts in the normal flow and it moves right or left as far as it can go um, and then everything else wraps around it. So here's a little page we have um, which is, I'll show you the uh, HTML for it. It's just a div container with a bunch of text in it, just alphabet at this point, and then a box that we have um, and then some more text. And at this point it's not actually floated, it's just uh, empty here. And um, it just kind of shows up in the middle of the flow of the text. Um, it's left aligned uh, just because that's the default. And uh, it breaks onto its own line because it's a div. It's a block level element. Um, and it just shows up right at the end of these Zs and right before these As. So um, the height of it is right here, right after these Zs. Now, if we're going to take this class example box, I've got a selector prepared, and give it a float of left. It's going to follow that rule that we just specified. And it's going to we'll read, the, we'll read the rule again. It's going to start in the normal flow where it is here, and it's going to move right or left as far as it can go. So it's actually already there. And then everything else will wrap around it. So when I refresh, you'll see this text kind of move up and start wrapping around it. Okay, and you'll also notice that it's kind of extending below the, the bottom of this uh, container element. Okay, so a width has to be specified for a floated element. That's uh, a rule that's important. Uh, it doesn't behave reliably if it doesn't have a width. Um, next, if the floated element does not fit a particular height, it'll move down until it does fit. Um, and I'm going to show you this by adding another floated element right below it. So here's another box, and we'll give it the second ID. Um, and now both of these have this class, so they'll both be floated left. When we refresh, you've got both of them here. Now, it actually didn't fit quite. Um, this would be... If, if it had been on this line in the normal page flow, it wouldn't have fit on the same line as this box, so that's why it's dropped down one line. Um, but to show, to drive the point home even more, I'm going to access this container element that they're in, and I'm going to change the width using Chrome's uh, inspect tool so that the width is l so small that they don't both fit. And when they didn't fit, it dropped, it, it moved it down just a, a line at a time until it found that it could fit right down here. Um, so this is the way that these boxes interact, are interacting with each other. And by the way, you'll notice the styling that I have uh, is, is like the typical Firebug styling for content, padding, border, and margins. 
um, even though it's just a box right here, I'm using a, a special JavaScript function that I'm including down here to give it that appearance and some, some included CSS as well. So don't worry about that. Just this would work the same for a normal, uh, just a normal box, um, but you wouldn't be able to see where the margining and all that is.